Simon Lee, Simon Lee, Simon Lee, and a cup of tea. Simon Lee, Simon Lee, Simon Lee, and a cup of tea. It's Simon Lee, Simon Lee, and a cup of tea. It's Simon Lee, Simon Lee, and a cup of tea. So here we go in Alan's kitchen. Alan had seen the show before, Sam and Lee Cup of Tea, so he was well prepared and um, hopefully he knows what sort of tea we like. He did uh, nail it, actually. It was, a, it was a good cup of tea. Choice of tea bag is Tesco's own. He had already added the milk and tea bag. I missed that on the camera, unfortunately. But uh, this is followed by the hot water, obviously, that which we see here. Sorry for the dodgy camera work, but this was by me on a GoPro. Don't buy GoPro. The uh, customer service is atrocious. So here we are. He's mixing the tea bag in. Milk in the fridge. Nice orchid, by the way, Alan. Very difficult to make this interesting, but please stay tuned because the interview with Alan is far more interesting than this voiceover. And here we go. So he's mixing the tea bag in now. And no, back again. Come on, Alan. Get on with it. Stop faffing about. Tea bag. Squeezing out the tea bag. Always a good thing to do. We like that. Tea bag on the sink one tea bag here's a second tea bag and the third tea bag there we go nice squeeze on the third bag alan notice that's his cup of tea nice strong cup of tea in the bin good hygiene and then we go to the mugs good backstory on one of the mugs actually which i'll leave for the actual video but that's somebody's and then we go to a cheers and another cheers no idea why well here we are again Yes. Sam and Lee in a cup yes. of tea, number four, with Alan Carter. Alan, how are you? Tired. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for getting up so early. Yeah, it, Alan. Absolutely not a problem good whatsoever. Man. Good man. Much, yeah, anything much for you, guys. And yeah. thanks for the tea. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking good. And what mum do you have? I'm jolly. Oh, we've got a Lucasfilm one. Lucas very nice. Very, very nice. nice. And, uh, yeah. Mm. How did you get this mug? Uh, Michael McMaster sent it to me. Michael McMaster? Oh. Did he send you one? No. Oh. What about you? No. Oh, okay. Long day, wasn't it? Michael, <laughs> nice mugs. Yeah, we want some mugs, Michael. Yeah, nice <laughs> mugs. So, Alan, how are you? Mm, very well, thank you very much. Good cup of tea as well. It's very nice. Choice of bag? Tesco's, was it? Did I see? Tesco's tea bag? Tesco's tea bag, yeah. Tesco's. Uh, maybe the best cup of tea. And it's the best cup of tea since the last one, that's what you've said. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've got to admit, it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. So, Alan, how did you get into joy building? Where did it all start for you? And that's the question I didn't think I was going to get asked. So it must have been, in all seriousness, I'll, it was when the Yahoo groups were knocking around. And I literally uh, set up a, an email account for BT and it was suggesting to me groups that I should join. And there was two R2D2 groups, Yahoo groups. Uh, I joined one. Uh, just out of pure curiosity, no intention of building an R2 ever. This was back in 2012 ish, 2012, maybe 2011. Um, started looking at the blueprints and kind of thought that was something I could build. Um, I built, not many people know this, but I built a full size R2 first. And I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Why yeah. did I do that? Right. So I made a minor mistake on the panels at the front, uh, just below the vents. There were two low down, and it was made out of wood. Um, it was it was good, and because I made this mistake, um, I just burnt it. <laughs> Burnt it. Wow. It, it, it was, was this in anger? It was during November of 2015. Did you film it? Bonfire? No, no, I, I, was I, it fireworks? I, I, I burnt it. <laughs> wow. but if I can find photos of the original. Um, Please it, do. It, it was pretty, it was pretty spot do. on, actually. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it sat out there. It was, looking back at it, it was, it was massive from when I made the... Uh, the half scale one. Well. Exactly, because you went on to half scale. Why did you go on to half scale? How soon after was after your traumatic burning of R2D2? Immediately afterwards. Oh, okay. 
almost right. immediately. I regretted everything that I'd done because I now, I now know that I could have because the, the, the everything was spot on uh, on the original on my original uh, full scale. Um, and looking back on it, I what I did was I pyro etched these the, the vents and the, and, the, and the panels. I think looking back on it, I could have filled them in. Right. Yeah. Of course. Um, but when I was doing it, it was like, this is permanent, this isn't going to work. It was only like three, three mil out, but it was at the bottom of the skirt, and it was just like, nah, I can't, I can't, wow. I can't do it. Yeah, it was all. And anyway, going back to the half scale, um, it was just something that had never been done. Mm-hmm. Indeed, yeah. Uh, I'd done the full scale, obviously regretted um, doing what I did. And I thought, well, no one's done a half scale. Uh, scratch bit. Yeah. And no one's done a half scale like you have done a half scale. No. Because, uh, you, no. you know, you're, you're very well um, remarked about, uh, you know, how, <laughs> how meticulous, as I say, yeah. you, have, you are about all these things I was, to, the, yeah. uh, to the letter. I was looking at some pictures already last night. And I was looking at, it was from... Uh, Celebration Europe, and I thought I was looking at this picture, and it was it looked full scale. Yeah, I thought that's yeah. a bloody good drawing that one. Yeah, fuck, it's mine. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was uh, that took five years, five years to um, to to fully complete. The hardest part was. Um, Half scaling everything. You gotta, you gotta. It's a bit like make, making a film. You got the ending. How did you get there? Yeah. And then you work your way to the ending. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, I, the ending is a half scale. Work backwards before I even start. So it was a good six months um, of researching again, mm-hmm. uh, because you realise that once you start half scaling, like. The, the unit and you're using club spec uh, planes you have to half scale the material yeah, yeah. well otherwise yeah. it's, nothing is ever going to fit yeah. so if I needed a favour which would have been definitely the dome at the time um, because I can't hand make that it was ne- never a flat pack design if I needed a dome I could say to somebody could you do us a favour could you print us a dome and I can help you out in the future or I could pay for the, 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 your, your filament knowing that when I get that done, it was going to fit. Mm. Mm. So the hardest part was finding the skins, which would have been half a mil. Yeah. I worked out the box. I, mean, I think you know the story, but I worked well out the box to work that one out. And 1.5 mil ply for right. the wooden frame. Uh, because I was working off the Frank Purr's frames from Media Conversions, which at the time was the best flat pack plans that I could use. Um, I know Dave Everett had plans, yeah. but I'd already used those plans for my previous build and found that you needed a lot of angled wedges to keep things upright, and his plans were in styrene, yeah. and I was working in ply. Yeah. Uh, they would have worked, but it was fiddly. Frank Purr's designs was literally lock, you know, jigsaw puzzle. They, they fit together. Once you dry fitted, yeah. when it was stable. So the skins were, I'm going all over the place here, the skins were laminate, right. wood laminate. Um, I think you'd find them, yeah. but, but turn inside out. And I sanded them, uh, I laser cut them, sanded them down. And fit and everything, um, and the, the hardest part for me was motorizing everything, yeah, yeah. half scaling yeah. the motors yeah. in order to move this thing along because yeah. it was weighing I can't remember now, it was weighing a lot. Yeah. And trying to find the motors for the feet and how to fit them into the feet with the, the right amount of torque, the power was a, a proper pain. And dome, everything, the dome mechanism was 
a version of what's been around forever, um, slip ring, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, to custom draw that, make sure that fitted. But everything was working exactly the same. That was a great thing. If I if I gave it to somebody, and as we know, as soon as you took the dome off, it was a club spec. Everything was club spec. Yeah. Yeah. Because three D printing wasn't so prolific when you first started your half scale build. Is that right? You know, obviously it took you five years. So by which time you probably had better access. Three D printing was was in its major infancy. Yeah. It was just. So not even thought of it. Or it was too expensive. Yeah. So there's no way that that was a consideration. You were always going to scratch model make, basically. Absolutely, yeah. Most yeah. of it. Yeah. Were there any 3D printed components? You mentioned about the dome or something. Was, what did you do in the end? Um, everything from the neck up. Um, anything to do with the dome that had a, uh, a spherical surface. Yep. Uh, the radar eye surround. The radar eye um, was a deodorant lid. Yeah rather than deodorant lid. Um, everything else had to be 3D printed. Hollow eyes, uh, the hollow projectors, yeah. um, pie panels, everything from the neck up that I couldn't flat pack laser was cool. um, 3D printed. Alan, let me ask you this, what's your go-to biscuit? My go-to biscuit happens to be Oh, Oreo uh, things. As if by magic. Wow. <laughs> we better get those open then. Absolutely. So, um, half star artist, where is it now? I don't have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd rather not, that's fine. No, um, but, but the, the story is, obviously, you went on, you went, you went on, <laughs> <laughs> you went on a journey. You are recording that with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's good. We leave that in there. Yeah. Maybe. No, no, no. So as long as it doesn't attack it, <coughs> she. <coughs> he. That's it, just. <laughs> you know, don't you? You're taking all the limelight, mate. <laughs> 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 I know. That's brilliant. That's hilarious. That's um, brilliant. Um, so, yeah. one, one thing I was going to ask you, Alan, is um, the amazing half star that you've built. Is that documented online? Can people go and look at that? Have you got a blog, a build blog, where people can go and look at all the detail you went to and how you went about some of the things we haven't been able to discuss today? Yeah, uh, there's a Facebook page, half dash the dash droid, half the droid. Right. Um, and everything's documented there. Cool, that's good. So I suggest people look at that because it's phenomenal mm. detail that Alan went to, so that's good. So after you've gone now, sadly, you, you, that's, that's yeah, really gone. Um, um, so the story was, I mean, I go, I upgraded everything, so I was constantly upgrading, trying to better myself, this could be better, this could spin faster, he can go faster, he can go slower, he can control better, and I was constantly looking online, trying to find the next better motor, uh, and eventually, it got to the stage where everything was absolutely perfect. Yeah. It was the right speed, um, it could be controlled perfectly, the dome rotated exactly how I wanted it to, it wasn't too slow, it wasn't too fast, and um, I peaked. I, I got yeah. to the stage where I had finished. Yeah. Yeah. There was no more, I can't do anything else. Um, and decided that my, what's my next project? Um, it stayed mostly under the stairs. I mean, I didn't do many conventions, but the ones I did do, which were, the, the, my first one was um, Celebration Europe, which was an absolute hoot. I mean, it's the best experience I've ever had. Um, was this the second one? No, that was the first. Oh, no, the, uh, the one in 2016. Okay. Yeah. Which, is where, which is where Sam Met us all and was inspired by Absolutely, it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, and then the last one was like this time last year, which was Birmingham. Yeah, yeah that's what I remember. You came up to SMCM, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, now, I, 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 I accomplished everything I needed to do with the half the joy. Yeah. However, the disappointing thing was, 
I realised that it wasn't getting the attention as well that it actually really deserved. Now you appreciate and you appreciate how fantastic it was. Mm. The weathering, even Don B's uh, commented on the weathering. Cool. Um, said it was absolutely spot on, and he gave me some tips actually. He messaged me. Hi Don. Uh, he, he, he gave me some tips on uh, just to calm down some of the weathering, and then it will be absolutely perfect. Okay. That's great. Uh, <laughs> That's why you're two cameras. Brilliant. Uh, so, um, <laughs> you don't care. That's great. You turn the camera to Sam. Sam's, Sam's, got him, Sam's got him working for him now, look. There goes your booty. Yeah. Um, Sam's happy as well. Yeah, so it wasn't getting the recognition um, right. as, far as, you know, as far as I was concerned. It was always in the background, it was always too small. Um, but I was happy with everything. Yeah. But, no, but not a lot of people, wherever I took it, it didn't get that. Wow, look at that. Mm. Yeah. And I was disappointed. Right. Fair enough. I think just to theorise that, I think the problem there is that the, to the to the unknown general public, yes, they just think it's a toy. You know, like like our full scale ones. It's time to get up. Time to get out, mate. I don't know what that was for. Anyway. <laughs> I just, I just think that the general public, you know, they see our full-scale ones as big toys. Mm. So equally, you know, you've got this half-scale one. Oh, it's just a toy. And the Diggs thing, you probably spoke that was, well. that was the, you know, that was the tipping point back mm. in Celebration Europe when I discovered it was actually six months before they started sending out the um, for free yeah. the um, first issues, yeah, the testers, yeah, and I discovered then. When I got my free issue, it was not to scale. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it it wasn't right. No, I was so excited because I was going to use the lightning from it. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and I was like, hold on, something's wrong here. This mm. isn't a half scale. This is this is less than half scale. Then Celebration Europe came up and found out that Dio Castini was going to be there. And I went over. There were about 50 yards in front of us and they were showcasing their models that they were going to give away free which they never did because they were too expensive and I said to them your R2 isn't half scale it's the wrong scale and they came over to my one why and they looked at it and said yeah we're, we're, because um, the magazines were sent out were pre-production we'll change the scale <laughs> To the right scale, and I said, "You know what? Brilliant! You got me. I'm sold. Yeah, I'll be getting that subscription. Money for the lighting." Um, but then they rolled it out, and, and, it, was it, was and it was like, "Yeah, it's not even. No. It's not even close. No. It was too squat, then yeah. too thin. Yeah, and it just just yeah, wasn't it was a shame. It's a shame. And it was heavily over-engineered. Oh, it was just absolutely. If they didn't, I'm looking at five squirrels running around. Um, if they had." Come to us, yeah, and said absolutely, and said, "How would you approach it?" Yeah, you would have said, "Well, this is the way you could have done it, and they could have done it aluminium, yeah, exactly the same uh, components but scaled down. I mean, they could have found a way of not having it welded, yeah, um, but there, there, there was so much they could have asked them, the U.S. builders or the U.K. builders." And, how would you approach doing this? Yeah. It's just a shame that none of us were involved. Because mm. um, as a community, we, we could have come up with something fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, over engineered. Yeah. yeah, that's a shame. What's, um, have you ever had a bad cup of tea? No. Never? Never. No, because I make my tea. Okay. You've not been somewhere and someone's offered you a cup of tea? Or... No, I don't like tea when I'm out. Okay. Because um, they okay. make it this. Where's this going? <laughs> just, it's just a question, Alan. Don't, don't read really, He's don't, obsessed with his tea. Don't, hey, don't yeah. Sam Lee. No, I mean, I've been to one football match in my entire life, which was Barnet. Um, and even that tea was nice. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Especially when it's pissing out of rain. Interesting. If, Interesting. You could, if you could put yourself in a scene, a Star Wars scene, to say I was there, and I say, for instance, maybe you're on planet half, 
you know, and you were just in the background watching Luke getting his X-wing, or you know, where where would that be, and what set would that be in any of the films? I think it would be the scene where Han is about to be encased in carbonite. Right. Mainly because we all know that that was ad libbed. Right. And it was never scripted. And I just would love to have been there. Okay. Interesting. Just, just, just Interesting. to be. Yeah, it's good. I was there with you. It's good that we're getting different answers for this. So Alan the Bounty Hunter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So, Alan, just to go back to where you. You joined your yeah. last guy after yeah. he's gone now, so you, yeah. you're, you're, you're. It's gone to a great home. Yeah. Good. Good to hear. I haven't seen it since, so, but. Uh, right. It's gone no, to well, a great right. home. We've been on lockdown pretty much since it went, really, haven't we, mm. unfortunately? So, there's that as well. So, it'll be interesting to see what he does with it. Yeah. Um, but on the way here. Sam hasn't stopped talking about your tiny chopper. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how is your tiny chopper? My tiny chopper has been uh, furloughed. Um, oh. I don't... It's in the cupboard, but I, I don't... So... I, 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 I thought you'd like that. Yeah, I, like that one. <laughs> I designed that from the ground up. Uh, there were no plans, and I still don't think there are public plans for that, uh, public released plans. They're not not, no, as, no, not no, accurate. No. So no. I started, it was more of like a fun thing, it hadn't, hasn't been done, I know that hasn't yeah. been done. Yeah. At the time no one had built a chopper apart from uh, Michael, McMaster, um, no one had certainly done the half scale chopper. So I literally took screen grabs of uh, Star Wars Rebels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And started drawing them up. It, I think it's still probably, I mean, I know that, uh, Michael Badley's drew up uh, his 3D printing plans. I think my one was, is, is definitely the most accurate mm -hmm. at the moment. Right. Can um, we see? Can you yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you get stay, your chopper out? Is what you're asking. Stay, yeah, yes. you know, well, I'll tell you what, Alan. I do admire your tiny chopper. I'm, I'm it's impressive. I'm impressed with it. Yeah. It's the best I've seen. It's the best it impressive tiny chopper. Well, Sam's seen a lot of tiny choppers in his time. I've got one. <laughs> yeah. So, if you want, do you can you pick him up? Can you get to the chopper? The chopper. So, you you sort of. Casually mentioned, you know, yeah, he's under the stairs, but that is stunning, Alan. Have you sort of, he's been furloughed, have you just lost interest for now? Have you just sort of lost your, your mojo on it, or? Yeah, he's kind of like, he's there as a, a gentle reminder that one day I might sort of get it finished. Because obviously that, that's the next question, what's next? Are you kind of done with building for now? Obviously we're, li we're living in strange times at the moment, and, uh, you know, projects and things like this, you know, are not a necessity. Is there something that you're looking to revisit perhaps in the future? Definitely at some point in the future it'll be Chopper. Um, he was designed with he was designed th th this one was designed without the mistakes that I made with my half scale. Uh, I made mistakes where the, the, I couldn't fit the wiring into the legs, so this was built from the ground up, making sure that eventually when I did finish it, it was so easy to motorise, yep. um, disassemble, reassemble, whereas the half scale R2, there's not a lot you can change anymore. No. Um, it looks great. It does really. really yeah, I'm, nice. I'm, I'm so impressed actually. Well, I, I designed the frame. Um, Kind of like with uh, Frank Perez gave me the idea of snapping and locking stuff in. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any 3D software. Right. So I have literally got to visualise yeah. what it looks like, how it will work, how it will fit, and then laser cut it out and hope that I just haven't wasted yeah. my time. Yeah, 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 of course. So everything's everything bolts on as opposed to glued, yeah, cemented. Yeah. Um, so have you got your own laser cutter? I use the school's one. Right. Uh, the, school, <laughs> the, school, the school's right. Yeah. So when I've got um, 
when I've got some time spared, I will. That's cool. I will just nip over. That's really nice. That's amazing. amazing. That's really good. And I'm pleased to finish it because it's just. Yeah, I, I think. Know, I know how well you did the game. He'll, he'll, he'll get it finished. Now and, yeah. Stunning. It's really good. If, if you could build any droid, you know, it doesn't, doesn't have to be, you know. Any droid within the Star Wars universe. Full scale, half scale, whatever it may be, if you could build any droid, what, what would your dream build be? What would you do? If you had the time and the money. I don't actually know. I'll tell you what, it was tense when you were, when you were really tense yeah. then. Yeah. Was, yeah. So. No? I can't, maybe, I, maybe just what you're doing now. You're happy, obviously, with what you're doing now. So Something that hasn't been built before. Okay. Yeah. And that's why I'm okay. stuck. Because yeah. you, 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 yeah. you know, mouse droid, yeah. ALT, yeah. R2D2, yeah. uh, they've been done to death. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm trying to think of something that hasn't been thinking out of the box. Yeah. That hasn't yeah. been yeah. built. Yeah. So maybe if you do come up with the answer, keep it to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, yeah. I, I had an, that as well. I had an idea when I was making him to do a Rex. Right. But someone's done that already now. Right. Um, yeah. So something that hasn't yeah. been built yet. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. it's doable. Yeah. I mean, there's no point in going uh, for uh, assassin droid because it just it's it's not within my realms of possibility and, yeah. and it's it's not something that could be remotely controlled yeah. elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've spoken to someone similar to you, and they want to build something you know unique, mm -hmm. and they're working on a um, animatronic case for SO at the moment that can mm -hmm. actually walk. Wow. wow. Exactly. And you think hey, that nah, but they're working on it. We'll we'll see what happens. They've been talking to me about it. Since Rogue One, so um, you yeah, know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Impressive, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. your yeah. next question? Uh, so, yeah, next question um, What is your most treasured collectible? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be Star Wars, this you usually reveal some interesting items. We had a table with Jim, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, table. My, is this my treasured no. collectible? What, what have you got? What's your, what's your most treasured item at the, at the moment? You know, what, what is your thing? Sometimes it's a new thing. You know, um, you know, you've recently bought into the house and you bought and like this is a cool gadget. So you know, but what what is your most treasured item? Should we say rather than collectible? You might not have collectibles, but what's um, a treasured item? Apart from the wife and kids, what would you grab first if there was a fire? Uh, my GPD um, player, which is a is a hair tongs. No, it's a, yeah. <laughs> GPD. GHD, 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 GHD uh, which is uh, yeah, it's it's cat's uh, it looks like a DS, um, but it only has a single screen. Right. Um, but it plays virtually almost every console available. Oh, okay, right. This game console. So, right, so, right, yeah, right. so it's wow. It plays so N64, PSP, PS1. So that, that would just be the first thing I'd grab because I could put it in my pocket. Right. Is that, is that, have you built that or is that a No, 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 I've bought this from, I bought this online, I can't remember where. Right. I think yeah. you shared that online recently, haven't you? That's cool. Oh, uh, yeah. That'd be the first, I mean, regards the first thing to pick up, but yeah. okay. regards to collectible, I've got um, uh, Master Replica lightsabers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and obviously we know that they went, tried to come back, yeah. but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. They're quite, um, they're quite collectible, they aren't they? quite sought after. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. a Darth Maul and a Luke, Luke Skywalker Sabre. That was purchased from Play.com when it was Play. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, Play. I mean, yeah. Play.com, yeah. And they yeah. had a sale. Yeah. They were £39 each. Wow. Yeah. Grabbed them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got lots of bits and pieces. I've, I've, I've Droid Pack that you sent me. What was that paid for? With your droid in it. Um, oh right, okay. Um, it was a three pack, I think. Mm. Oh, from yeah, yeah. Okay, from I, the, I from the, all sorts of bits from the Disney park. Yeah, with the yeah. Astromex in, so that's, that's the one. Yeah, four pack. Then mm. that would be the yeah, yeah. one. They're really nice. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're really nice. They are. Oh, they're, they're cool. They're good. Loads of little bits yeah. and pieces upstairs yeah. that I've yeah. collected over the years. Cool. And you make other stuff as well, don't you? Adam? You um, your arcade machine that you made. Yeah, which is smashed to pieces. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, so I built that. You've got history here. Uh, there's, uh, a, there's a uh, yeah. <laughs> It's not good enough to smash it out. Right. So another thing of 
it's been done already. Yep. What hasn't been done? Um, so I built the arcade machine, and it was like, well, what hasn't been done so far? And it was um, I designed uh, a control unit as opposed to the actual uh, uh, arcade a control unit where you would actually put the Raspberry Pi into, and all you needed to do was just hook it up to the TV, and you were yep. good, you were good to go with the actual joystick and everything else. Yep. Um, but yeah, I sort of turned around with games, really vintage games, right? That sort of thing. <laughs> um, let me just ask you one quick question: What do you want for Christmas? Nothing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need anything. But what you alluded to earlier is that um, this year for Christmas you're um, not doing gifts. No, no, we're going to be uh, donating. We basically uh, suffered greatly during the COVID era. Um, some have lost their jobs, some have lost loved ones, and we just, uh, as a family, we'd rather just give as opposed to receive this year. Uh, we just see as a, you know, we can, mm. and if we can, why not? Yeah, very noble of you. Yeah. Very noble of you, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's good. That's good. So, Lee. Well, unfortunately, I've left my hidden talent at home. Oh. Sorry about that, but that will be for another time. But I believe you, um, being L Street that we're in, yeah. home of many movies and EastEnders. Yeah. So my hidden talent is, it's kind of a hidden talent. I've got this, so I've always inspired to be an actor in EastEnders. And I've, I've, you know, I've got my lines down and I've got my part, so I'll be working in the calf. You're ready. You're, you're ready. I'm ready to go. Right. If, they, if I got the call, Sam Prentice, we need you here at L Street. You're there already. We need you in the calf. Here's how it's going to go. I'll be there and I'll be like, don't worry about the script, guys. Sam Prentice is here. It's all right. So this is the scene, right? It's all kicking off. Phil Mitchell bursts into the calf. Just drink the cup of tea in peace, please. Please. Of course. And what does Phil say? Sam! Cup of tea! There I am behind the counter. I'm already making a cup of tea. And then I'll go. Do you want to shoot me that, Phil? Cup of tea, 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 cup of tea. Ding ding! 30p. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. So no, you, do, 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 or anything like that. No, at the end. It's not a lot oh, of No, no, I don't, look. Listen, I don't need that kind of kudos. I don't need a do-do at the end of it. I'm just giving Phil Mitchell a cup of tea. He's having a bad day. Right. Aim high, that's what I say. Yeah. Well, that's it. So, Alan, do you have this a... This is about as surreal as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a talent? Or what scene in EastEnders, for example, would you like to be in? <laughs> Have you got a hidden talent? No. No, right, so what's the EastEnders question? <laughs> well, what scene would I want to be in? Yeah. In EastEnders? Uh, yeah, I think. You watch EastEnders? No, no. I watch it occasionally, but um, I would probably be in a scene in the Queen of Vic. All right, okay. At the end of the bar, just drinking. You know what? That's exactly what I would have said. Yeah. yeah. You would be playing darts. No, I can't, can't play darts. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like it. Yeah, drink, yeah. So I, I, I like think, I think the bar, in the bar, just yeah. in the background, just yeah, drowning my sorrows, yeah. hoping for many takes. Yeah, and drinking beer. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> making sure the yeah. beer's real. Yeah. Well, that well, was that was that was. Thanks for that, Sam. Well, we've got one final thing to give you, Alan. Oh. And this is going to be your most treasured item, we hope. Oh. And it's the reason that we do this. Thank you very much. Other than the entertainment value, <laughs> you get yourself your very own. Well, I'm shaking. I know, because I know you can't buy these. No, you can't buy them. Oh, so, oh, you have a team up. Look at that. There you go. So, thank you.
Thank you for having us, Alan. Oh, it's been Anybody an else that wants to come around and enjoy Builders, please <laughs> have us around and we'll happily give you a mug just for the time and the tea. Um, and Alan, thanks for what you do with the club still oh, now. You know, even though you're not that active building, I appreciate it. You're, you're a good man, Alan. You lose it, but you're interested now and again with the building, like you say about Chopper, but you're always active on the balls. You're a fountain of knowledge with all your you know, history on L Street. Thank you. And to the you know, details on the, the R2s through the years and so on. And you're, you're always posting on the club and, you know, you keep you help people out. So thank you for all you do. It's been and um, keep up the good work, mate. Thank, right, you. thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. There you go.